So this video is sort of companion to um, the Hydromedusa um, tutorial on how to compute an alpha diagram, just because I'm going to use it for an H3PO4 system. Again, but it, but it also stands alone. This is in the chapter 10 section, even though we haven't gotten to titrations yet, um, just because I'm preempting it, because um, I think it's a valuable tool as you start to think about titrations. It's an absolute um, way to check your, your values. I also think the power in um, having a database tool that allows you to compute complex equilibria like this really quickly is it allows you to develop intuition over systems pretty quickly because you can change small variables without having to calculate a bunch of stuff by hand and you can see what the outcome is. So I'm going to show you how to do this really quick. Um, so open up your Hydra database again and uh, we're going to um, just have uh, the hydrogen ion. Uh, nope, I don't want to remove that. And I'm going to grab phosphorus here and I'm going to grab the phosphate again. Um, and I will click File, Save and Exit, open it in Medusa. Um, I'm going to call this one H3PO4 um, titration. titration. And I'll save. A couple more steps we need to do here now. Um, we need to go to uh, File, Data File, and then Modify. What that's going to pull up are the, the things that are going to be modeled, um, both explicit and implicit. So we have um, the components, which I told you before. A component is the simplest representation of one equilibrium system or one reaction. And so we have the proton that we want to model as one of our components. And then associated with that in the soluble complexes bin over here is the hydroxide, right? Because it's implicit that hydrogen ion and hydroxide are part of the, the water dissociation. And then for PO43 minus, we have as a component, and then we have the associated soluble complexes of that, which is the protonated versions of phosphate. Um, so if I want to titrate, so I could do this a couple different ways. I could I could titrate phosphate, um, and the if I wanted to just show a titration curve for phosphate itself, uh, the base, then this is the way that I would set that up. And maybe I'll record a separate video of that. But instead, uh, if I wanted to titrate the acid, H3PO4, then um, I need that to be the component that I have here, um, which means I need to take this phosphate and I need to swap it with H3PO4. And so I go down to this exchange a component with a complex button. I click that, opens up my new thing, and it says exchange chemical component, and that's the one I want to get rid of. I don't want to get rid of it, but I just want to exchange it, and I want my component to be H3PO4. Say, okay, do it. Uh, and now I see I have H3PO4 here, and now PO43 minus has been switched. Um, that's going to allow me to um, uh, titrate from the perspective of H3PO4 rather than PO43 minus. It's my component. I don't want to titrate an acid with an acid, so I have to do the same thing with my H+. I need to swap it with the base hydroxide. So I'm going to go exchange a component, and then I'm going to click hydroxide and OK do it. And now I have the base titrant, and I have my h 3 po PO4 component, and then I have all the relevant species that are part of that equilibrium. So I'll do save changes and exit. I'm just going to override that file, say, yeah, I'm cool with that. And then I'm going to do what I did before, which is run and then uh, make a diagram. That's going to open up my uh, diagram, Medusa um, uh, GUI. Now, what do I want as a plot? I don't want a logarithmic plot. Uh, I want a um, calculated pH plot. No, nope, I don't want that. I want, uh, yes, I do. I want, uh, yeah, there's calculated pH uh, on my y-axis, like a titration curve. And then I want, not my log, but I want the total concentration varied of the hydroxide on the x-axis. And uh, you have to have a little bit of knowledge of what you what's going into the system. So if you've got, uh, and I can just sort of do this in my head really quick. If I've got, um, let's say, 0.1 molar H3PO4, formal concentration, of course, um, and I select OK, I know then that's going to take three equivalents of hydroxide to neutralize it completely. If I've got 0.1 molar, then that means I'm going to need to add up to 
0.3 molar to have this entire thing uh, uh, done or neutralized. So I'm going to go from 0 up to 0.3 because I don't really need to go beyond that. Um, and I'll click OK. That'll neutralize the whole thing. Maybe I'll go up to 0.4 just for fun. And then I'll click OK. OK, so you can see this. It actually puts it on my diagram here. So I'll have from 0 to 0.4 uh, in terms of molar concentration of hydroxide that's added. It's not the same as milliliters, um, but you could easily convert this to milliliters um, if you knew the, the actual concentration of the base that you're adding. Uh, it doesn't, so it's just adding what concentration of hydroxide would be required uh, at each of these steps, and then the computed pH. So I'm going to click Make a Diagram and it's going to make this nice looking diagram. And the diagram shows me uh, where I have pure H3PO4 here, and then uh, here's my halfway point, um, and so I can move up from there uh, and move through the equivalents and to my second plateau uh, where my second buffer region is. So this is where um, pH would equal pKa2, this is where pH would equal pKa1, move up through my second equivalence point, um, where I've titrated exactly all of that um, second version of the H3PO4, and then finally moving up so that I have um, predominantly PO4-3- in the system. This um, I could overlay or underlay with the alpha diagram, and uh, it would match up nicely with that. Okay, so I said I'd, I'd make a, a quick uh, additional video. Um, showing you how to go in the opposite direction. So if you've got just the tribasic phosphate, so the PO4-3- uh, and you want to titrate that with acid, what would that look like? It's actually easier. So I'm going to have my H plus as a component. I'm going to have my PO4-3- as a component. I'm going to save and exit that. Uh, I'll do that. I'm going to name that PO4 titration with acid. I just did this. Um, so I'm just going to save that. Yep, I'll override that. Um, now I don't actually need to do any changes with my um, particular components and solid complexes because I have what I need. I have the H plus as a component, I have the PO4-3- as a component. So I'm going to go to run, make a diagram, I'm going to do uh, calculated pH on the Y, I'm going to do total concentration H plus varied, um, I'm going to just make up a value and say I've got 0.1 molar phosphate to start with, and then uh, just like I did in the previous video, I'm going to go from a zero concentration up to, and I know in this case it's going to take three equivalents of proton to fully protonate it, so I'll go up to 0.3. Um, and that should be it. So I go ahead and click Make Diagram, and I get a nice um, profile that looks just like this. Uh, now we're going from the basic side, high pH, down as we add uh, additional proton uh, in the form of whatever that strong acid might be that you'd use.